what's not working with the EU? I, I think uh, the question should be turned completely around. So what is working with the EU? Uh, and then we would find a few things. Uh, of course, this is not a reason to disband the EU. It's actually a reason to build a much better, completely radically different <laughs> Europe today. Uh, what's not working? I mean, it's uh, enough to look at the so-called refugee crisis, in which way Erdogan, for instance, is blackmailing Europe that he will leave three millions of refugees from mainly from Syria to Europe if they call his occupation of the Kurds an occupation. And you've seen the reaction of the European Union. Uh, look at the state repression in Spain. Uh, look at uh, how the boss of the European Commission was elected. Was she a candidate at all? I mean, DMers and others remember that many different movements and parties were running for the European elections. And you will also remember some other candidates from other parties and so on. None of them is the boss of the European Commission. I mean, this already shows that there is not only a democratic deficit in the European Union, there is a lack of democracy in the European Union. And as a consequence, as a result to this lack of democracy, what we can see all around Europe is the birth of monsters, the birth of autocratic, repressive states, the birth of populist leaders, uh, the lack of solidarity, the return to what Benedict Anderson called imagined communities, which means a return to this fixation that a name uh, is an idea which still has any meaning in the 21st century where the whole concept of serenity is completely changing. Uh, so what you will see today when you look at the map of the European Union is that the European Union is really, as DiEM25 three years ago said and predicted, that the European Union is disintegrating and that the European Union is collapsing. And if this happens, if it really completely collapses, uh, it would not only have disastrous effects on the populations of Europe and the European Union, it will have a disastrous effect also on global politics. So I think it is our responsibility as Democrats, as progressives, uh, to stop the collapse, to radically transform the European Union and to rethink the very idea of Europe. What does Europe mean? What about states which are not part of the European Union? You've seen what is happening now with Northern Macedonia and with Albania. You know, how can anyone trust in the European Union if they made a deal uh, uh, that Macedon Northern Macedonia, how it is called now, will get a green light uh, for accession negotiations if they change the name. So they change the name. What happens now? I mean, in this situation you can see that Europe is falling on a worse, 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 on a lower, lower, lower stage of disintegration. And we have to stop it. Well, it's enough to come to Brussels to see why. Uh, because uh, those who are supposed to represent the people, uh, they are based in a fortress, driving in Mercedes, BMWs, leaving a huge carbon footprint and so on, and they are not connected to the people. And even if they pretend that they are connected to the people, like to the people of Northern Macedonia, they trick them in the end. Or you have seen what happened to Greece uh, with the Ohi referendum. Uh, so how can people, how can the Greek people, for instance, be connected, connected to the European Union uh, if the European Union did everything it could in order to change the vote of a democratic referendum. Uh, uh, there are so many other things which show why people are disconnected from the EU and as a consequence again what you have is that these people are getting more and more connected to populist leaders because what you have as a consequence of austerity and privatizations uh, imposed by the so-called Troika or however it is called now the so-called institutions namely the European Commission and so on what you have as a consequence is people without jobs, people with lower pensions, even people in Germany who have a minimum pension of something like eight or nine hundred euros, they are now massively emigrating to Bulgaria, Romania and so on because these are the only places where they can make a living. Uh, so in this situation where people are already living not on the edge of poverty, people are already poor, the majority of people, where there is huge inequality, uh, as a consequence you have anger, as a consequence consequence of anger you have resentment. As a consequence of resentment you very often have impotence. As a consequence of impotence you very often have hatred of others, you have fictional enemies and 
those who are using this anger, this libidinal economy, these emotions are usually Viktor Orban, Farage, Le Pen and name the others. And unfortunately the so-called European institutions are not helping at all, they're actually making the situation much worse. So why should we wonder that the people of Europe are not connected uh, to the elites of Europe, to the bureaucrats of Europe, to Europe which is imposing austerity, to Europe which is privatizing, to Europe, Europe which is putting the outer border now between Croatia and Bosnia so that the refugees cannot get in? Well, I'm not surprised. So DiEM25, together with uh, many other partners, scientists, activists, movements, uh, for years now has been working on uh, policy. Because we don't think it's just enough to say no, to just go on the streets. And you know what usually happens after you go home off the streets, uh, you know, a few years later you wake up and you are nostalgic towards the good old days when you were on the street, or you become melancholic and you don't believe in politics anymore because you didn't change anything on the streets. Uh, this is not a reason not to go on the streets. I would invite everyone to come on the streets, whether you are in Chile, in Lebanon, in Czech Republic, in Croatia or wherever. But what is important if you go to the streets is to have a certain idea how would you change, not how would you change this system, but what would come instead of it. And we have been working on different policy proposals. The Green New Deal is just one of them. The others are connected to technological sovereignty of Europe. Uh, you've seen Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez recently questioning Mark Zuckerberg. I think uh, it should be the European Union as well who should question him. I mean, when they questioned him at the European Parliament, that was a farce. That wasn't really compared to what Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez was doing. Uh, and we should really tackle the question, what about Uber, what about Airbnb uh, in Europe and so on, and how come that Silicon Valley companies are actually monopolizing public services. Uh, uh, that's only one of the policy proposals we have, that's when it comes to technology. Uh, one of the first campaigns DiEM started was about transparency. How is it possible that the Eurogroup or, or, or the European Commission and so on are making decisions which, will, which are radically changing the lives of millions in Europe uh, without the public or the population to even know about it? I mean, if you don't know about it, how can you change the situation? Uh, I mean, this is the basic lesson which WikiLeaks and Assange gave us that, you know, in order to change the situation, to criticize the situation, you need to have the information. Uh, unfortunately, today, we are losing the information and the European Union is not transparent at all. Uh, of course there are many other pillars but one of the most important ones uh, uh, during the last period is certainly the Green New Deal. Um, I know there are many Green New Deals all across Europe, all across the world and so on, uh, but uh, why DiEM's Green New Deal is specific and also the campaign, the Green New Deal for Europe, which was uh, backed by Labour, by many other MPs and movements and so on, I think because it tries to give a holistic view, it tries to, to, to propose a holistic policy uh, uh, which, uh, you know, it's not just about what should Britain do tomorrow, what should France do and so on, but how can we use the existing European institutions uh, in order to get massive investment into public infrastructure, into green technology, uh, not into all the rest what you are seeing today, like coal, uh, you know, cars, uh, planes, uh, industry which belongs to the 20th century. So basically what we are proposing in the Green New Deal is very concrete measures how we could reach something uh, what we could call post-capitalism. Uh, of course it's difficult to explain it in, in a few sentences. The programs are 100 pages long. I know no one reads programs anymore, but take a look. Well, if you look at the world today, you will see that there are massive protests going on from Chile uh, to Lebanon to, well, last month it was the Gilets Jaunes as well, Algier, uh, Hong Kong. Uh, I mean, almost the whole map of the world is now covered with protests and the connection is, to a certain degree, inequality and austerity. Uh, uh, why should anyone then come to Czech Republic if all these protests are happening all across the world? Uh, well, because uh, we are internationalists uh, and that's why uh, at the end of November we are all coming uh, to Prague. Uh, hundreds of members of DiEM25 all across Europe, activists, but also people who are not part of DiEM, everyone is invited. Why? Because on the one hand we will have the first assembly of DiEM25, uh, which is, I think, a very democratic uh, uh, event, uh, uh, a beautiful event uh, in which members, but also activists and participants of DiEM25 can propose 
in which direction DiEM should go. Uh, you've seen that we participated at European elections, we got nine MPs elected into the Greek Parliament, we have the Green New Deal, we are building the Progressive International and so on. Uh, but there is of course a big question, first of all, how to assess all of this, what we've accomplished and what else can we do and in what, which ways we can do it better. Uh, so that's the main purpose of our Prague meeting. And the second one is of course where everyone is invited, it's the public event uh, where uh, Yanis Varoufakis, many other, uh, uh, let's say, representatives of DiEM25 from all across Europe but also Czech Republic will be present. So it's, uh, I think, a brilliant opportunity to get together, uh, to think, to act and to have some fun. And there is something in Czech I could read, but I cannot remember it, so... Zveme Shechny de Prahy. Something like that. I hope I didn't say something <laughs> nasty. <laughs> so I hope to see you in Prague.